Hi, Russ here. Uh, this is a follow-up video to the question, the Quora question that I answered the other day about can I assign two different sets of page numbers in a document, i.e. page one, but it's also page 101, and I need the text on page one to appear on page 101. Well, yes, we can do this. Um, and what we need to do is understand a little bit away, a little bit about the way word structure is okay because word will allow us to insert page numbers on whatever page we want and then it will just continue the linear sequence from start through to finish um, unbroken one through to however many pages you've got however word doesn't actually work in, ter in terms of pages like that um, and i'll show you what i mean just now so what i'll do is i'll just fire up word and i will insert i'll create a blank document and Let's put a return in there like that. You need show high characters on for something like this. So if they're not visible, turn them on, okay? If I insert a page number here in the footer, insert um, page number, current position, I insert page one. If I now add a page break, I get page two, page three, page four, page five, and so on and so forth. And this is the way Word works in a linear fashion. However, for what we're doing here, we need to break that linear process. Now, again, Word doesn't actually recognize page numbers in the same way that we do. So, and I'm going to show you what I mean here, okay? So if I get rid of that page break, because I cannot break this page number and sequence with a page break. For that, I need to use a section break. So if I come to, sorry, to layout, breaks, next page break. Page breaks just insert the cursor at the top of the next page. Section breaks allows us to change the structure of the document. Okay, So now we still have page one and we still have page two. But if I double click in the footer, you can see that this is, says footer section two. Page one says footer section one. Now this is how Word works. Word works in sections. So, and sections link up. So two links to one, not one link into two, not the other way around, okay? So if I want to break this link, which is what I have to do to achieve this page numbering, is I put my cursor in the footer of section two, and then up here on the header and footer tab, I break the link, or I press the link to pre just to break that link. Now if I start typing in section two, footer, nothing happens in section one, okay, because they're not linked, they're isolated. So what this allows me to do is to select that page number, select format page numbers, I can change the formatting if I want, and I can also change the starter number, and I'm gonna change that to 101. So now we've changed, now we've got two pages in our document, pages one and two, but page two is actually page 101. So again, this is what I mean by the page numbering is kind of abstract with Word. Word doesn't work in that, in this, in this format as such. If I had like a 50 page document full of text and each chapter was 10 pages, so I've got five chapters, and chapter two started on page 10, let's say, and then I change the entire document to A4, chapter two would no longer be on page 10 because it would now go to something like um, 100 pages. So chapter two would be on page 20, let's say, okay? So this is really, I know it's kind of out there, but this is the way Word works. And what we're doing here is we've got two pages, but page one and page 101. So if I tell Word, control G, to go to page two, sorry, let me put the cursor on page one so you can see what I'm doing. I tell Word to go to page two, it's going to go to page two, but it's page 101. So there's this kind of, yeah. And the way Word actually works is it works in what we call ranges. And this is where the headings, the built-in headings in Word are so, so important because we have nine levels of heading. Heading one, two, three, through to heading nine. And as I'll show in a moment, when, when we're talking about ranges, when we're using the headings, we're referring to ranges, and that's what Word likes to work with, okay? So, now we've got page one, now we've got page 101, and I want to insert my text. So I'm going to type page one at the top here, and I'm going to make that heading one, so we can see it. Press the return, and then I'm going to insert equal around four paragraphs of four sentences, like so, okay? And again, like I say, it's essential that you have these show high characters turned on. 
And what I'm going to do to, to replicate this, I don't want to type it all in again, and I want it to make it um, updatable. So I select the range of text that I want. Now, when I say the range of text, this can include an image, a table, it can include charts, whatever you like. Word doesn't care. It's all about the range, the selection. And then what I do is I do insert bookmark. And I'll call this, for simplicity's sake, page 01. Now you can't use spaces when you bookmark, and neither can you put numbers at the start. I just won't allow it for some reason. Okay, so page underscore 01. Will it allow hyphens? No, it won't allow hyphens. You can do underscores, but not hyphens. So page 01, and then I click on Add. And now I've got this bookmark. Now you'll just see these bookmark marks appear because I've got them turned on with a macro I can turn them off like that but that's showing me the bookmarked area so if I add rust text here in the paragraph beneath it that's no longer in this bookmark range okay so now that I've bookmarked this I can reuse it in words so I place my cursor where I want the text to appear and then I come to insert, and then I insert a cross-reference. Now, Word will allow us to reference most things in our document. Numbered items, headings, bookmarks, footnotes, endnotes, equations, etc. Now, we're interested, of course, in bookmarks. And then, as soon as I select that, get the option to insert as hyperlink, which is what I want. And then there'll be a mighty list of bookmarks here. And then I can insert the reference to the text, the page number, the paragraph number, etc., etc. Okay, so I naturally want bookmark text. Then I click on insert, and look what happens. There we go. Um, and this is a modal doc, uh, modal box it will stay open, so I can, if I have other bookmarks, if I wanted to do bookmark insert reference to above, below, etc., I can. But I'm going to close that. And now we've got page one here. We've got page one here. Now this page one cross reference is what we call a field code. Now, if you can't see them, click on File Options, then Advanced, and then all the way down here, you'll see Field Shading, Never Always When Selected. So if I select Never, then it won't appear as a field code. If I right-click on it, I can then update Field, Edit Field, Toggle, Field Code. Now, I, I use macros a lot, so I've got my Always Show, and when so show when selected so if I deselect it and then reselect that will do what we need it to and the beauty of having this in as a cross-reference if you do an academic work or something like that where you have to state your hypothesis in the introduction and also in the conclusion bookmark your hypothesis and that will ensure that you state it exactly okay now of course if I update or change the original text so page one heading one now the, the original text is now changed. All I need to do is update the bookmark. So then I can right click, update field. And then the bookmark will update also. If I change again, one, two, three, and I can do the same there. And now I've got a little macro which will allow me to update all fields. And then I can do that. Of course, as you see here, this is not in the bookmark. So it's not gonna update. If I go to the end, and then I add it to the bookmark there before the bracket. And then I update all fields. Now it's going to appear. There's a little, an extra paragraph, uh, sorry, an extra full stop at the, the front there. And then I update and so on and so forth. Okay. Now let's say, for example, I insert a heading two and I'll format that as a heading two. And then I do equals round to two. Need a bracket, not a nine. Now I've got heading one, heading two, then a heading one. Now I'm creating multiple levels of ranges within work in terms of the hierarchy. You know, if I click on view the navigation pane and I come to headings, you'll see that I have page one, page one. These are heading ones, this is a heading two. If I select the first heading one, right click, select heading and content, it's going to select that entire range up to the next heading one. This is how Word works in ranges. Okay? This is why it's important that you use the built-in headings of Word. Okay, the headings one to heading nine. However, if I select heading two and I select the heading two range, 
it's only going to select that range. I insert a heading three, and then I equals round to one. Now you can see the heading three is here. If I select the heading three range, that's all it's going to select. If I select heading two, it's going to select heading two and three. If I select heading one, it's going to select everything down to the next heading one. Okay? And this is how Word works in ranges. So this page one and this page 101 is just purely abstract for Word. Okay? I know it's a little bit of a woo kind of um, concept, but again, it's fundamental to understanding how Word works. Anyway, hope this helped. Thank you.